Hello and welcome to J&G Electric. My name is Joey. I'm the Master Electrician. What we're doing today is taking out a defective dimmer. What this dimmer is doing, you can see that the lights will dim, but when you dim and turn on, it's in its high mode. There's something wrong with the slide. Even though it's a new dimmer, it's having issues. And it drives, drives the customer crazy. So even though it works sometimes, sometimes it doesn't, we're going to change it out. And this is something that you may be able to do at home. You're going to need a voltage tester. They come in many shapes and sizes. This is pretty expensive for a homeowner, but you're going to need some type of a voltage tester so you know if the power's on or not. You can also turn the circuit breaker off downstairs, come up and see if these lights are still on. If the lights are off, you know the circuit's off, so it would be fine for you to proceed and uh, take it apart. This would be a perfect job for Darwin because he's a lefty. Darwin is uh, our lead technician and he would be loving this. I'm hating it. So what you want to know about really with dimmers is back in the olden days a dimmer was a dimmer. Today dimmers are a little different because they have to be LED compliant, meaning that they will work with a dimming control. The problem that you run into is even though you have a dimmer and it's an older dimmer and it works okay for your LED bulbs, it could contribute to premature lamp burnout premature dimmer failure, so on and so forth. So your best bet is, is to install a dimmer that is LED compliant. A couple different ways you can tell that it's good with LED. It may be on the small print that's on the dimmer, but the easiest way for you to tell is this little uh, black knob that adjusts intensity of when the lights are on dim, how low you can go to make it dim. It's a trim, it's a trim knob. But if it has that, generally that tells you that you have an LED style dimmer. Also, <clears throat> the dimmers that we use are Lutron. You see LED with a plus next to it saying that you can either use LED and or incandescent or halogen. It shows you the trim knob. This is blue in color, but it's actually a darker color. But this has been blue, it's been white, it's been yellow, all different colors, but you can say it. And this says 15 minute installation. That's for somebody that knows what they're doing. So anyhow, you're going to have three wires inside. You're going to have a ground wire, which is going to be bare copper or green colored. And you're going to probably have two black wires. One of the black wires is going to be a power wire. The other black wire is going to be what they call the switch leg or the switching wire that goes up to your light fixture. We normally put tape on the device to make sure that we don't have any accidental contact with the ground conductor which would trip the circuit breaker. There are two different colored screws on the dimmer. One is copper the other two are brass. The copper screw 
indicates the common, what we call common post. That generally is where you're going to put the power conductor on that post. The switched conductor goes on the screw generally directly across from the copper screw. So you have the brass, you have the copper, and you have the brass. These are the two screws that you're going to use. If you use this and this, you'll have to turn the switch upside down because it'll be backwards. But it comes with an arrow and it says up. Now, as you can see, the newer dimmer has the blue knob instead of the black knob or the charcoal knob to work fine. So that's good. Last connection is the ground, the green wire. We talked about the voltage tester, just so you can see how it works. This will tell you which one is the power conductor. The one that I have the tester on right now is the power conductor. This has no power on it, and this is the wire that goes up to the light. So if you touch these two, lights are on, lights are off. Lights are on, lights are off. Do not do this at home when the electricity is on unless you know what you're doing because you can get hurt. Be sure the power is off. If you're not comfortable with trying something like this at home, don't do it. Call a professional. Many people call us after they take the switches out. Let's just picture there's three switches in here and they pull the switches out and some of the wires fall out of the switches and then half of their electricity is out in their hallway and then they call us and we come there and there's all these wires and we're like, wow, what, what's going on? And it costs the customer a lot of money to fix what they started. So if you don't feel that you're mechanically inclined for something like this, just take this for a little bit of uh, knowledge for your soul, but uh, don't do it at home. Uh, unless you're 100% comfortable. So we're going to take the power conductor. As you can see, these screws are pre-bent. You're putting them in clockwise because if you remember probably a long time ago, you were told righty-tighty, lefty-loosey. So righty tighty meaning the screw is going in the right direction to tighten and it will pull the wire in that same direction which will give you a good electrical solid connection. Okay, turn it on, it's down low. We'll adjust the trim. See how low we can get it to go. Turn it off, turn it on, turn it off, turn it on. And that's a nice low setting. And then as you turn it up, it intensifies. That's full brightness. Turn it off, turn it on, turn it off, turn it on. Seems Again, I did not turn this off. I would not advise anyone to work with a live electrical circuit. The only reason I do it is because I've been doing it for so long and I'm lazy to go downstairs and figure out what circuit it is to turn it off. However, the panel should be labeled properly. So if you have a panel in your home that's not labeled properly, that would be something that you could do on a weekend or give us a call and we could identify your circuits for you. The only thing that you need to do because there's an extra device that's in the box, there are these little tabs on the outside edge. As you can see, they've already been removed on this one. 
So you're going to need to remove those as well. Just carefully wiggle back and forth. They're pre-cut, so they'll come right off. You all may be looking at the outlet that's next to this dimmer, and it looks a little different than maybe outlets that you've seen. This is an outlet that has USB charger points for, so you don't have to have your charger transformer plugged in. It's a little neater application. They replace um, existing outlets that are in your kitchen or living room, wherever it may be. The square style device is called Decora, where this outlet here is called just a standard duplex. Put some light on the subject so you can see what you're doing. Look out. Now, if I were to gauge this type of a project on its difficulty level, I would put this at maybe like a three. Not too difficult to do because it was only two wires. You may run into a situation where you have three wires. These switches are made for either three-way and or single pole. So if you have an on and an off button on the switch, that tells you that it's a single pole. If it doesn't have on and off, it is a three-way switch. But when you buy dimmers today, they come multi-faceted to where they'll work for both. I didn't notice it when I removed the plate, but this box is wiggling inside the wall. And when you tighten it up, it pulls it out where it's not flush. And you may even have some of these kind of outlets in your home. When you use these decorative style plates, sometimes they have a tendency not to sit really flush up against the wall. So what we went and got out of the truck was this strap, it's called a Madison strap. I'm not really sure why they call it Madison strap, but that's an old uh, word for this uh, device. They also call them nail box support. That makes a lot more sense. But you put this box support in and it allows you to push the box back and it holds the box back into the wall so it doesn't pull forward when you tighten it. Instead of having two supports, we're just gonna have the one. But that's all you really need. The one was pulling out when I was pulling up, which was creating a problem. Nice. Nice and flush up against the wall, the drywall. 
it's not pushed out. Nobody wants a plate not sitting flush on the wall. Especially if you're OCD like me, everything has to be level, plumb, straight, fit the way it's supposed to fit. Now, if you remember, the box said 15 minute installation. It's a lot longer than 15 minutes because we had to do something extra. But anytime you're working on an older house, there's always something that gets your attention and you got to fix it. But it's easier to fix it now than fix it later. That is your dimmer installation replacement. So if you liked what you saw today, uh, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe. Stay tuned for new how-tos and different types of uh, electrical things that you might be able to learn. Stay tuned to J&G Electric, and thank you for taking the time today to visit with us. Have a good day.